Hey guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to add a Raspberry Pi to your Arcade 1UP Countercade. Now these are pretty cool little vertical bar tops from Arcade 1UP and they're on sale at Walmart for $99. I'm not sure if anywhere else is selling them for that price there, but I picked up a couple. And as soon as I got my hands on one, I knew I had to throw Raspberry Pi inside of here. Keep in mind that this is a vertical screen setup, so you're going to be stuck with vertical screen games. There are some images out there with nothing but vertical screen games, or you can use a bat file to pull them from your FBA or main folder. I'm personally using the Verti Wild image and it works really good on this countercade. It's a 16 GB image with nothing but vertical games. I do want to mention this before we get started. The screen on this thing is a little bit washed out. It's not as bad as it's looking here on camera, but in real life you do notice a little bit of washout with this 8 inch screen. And unfortunately that's just how it is. With the LCD converter board that I'm using here, I've tried every single setting to make it look better, but unfortunately it's just a cheaper screen that they used in these countercades. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to add a Raspberry Pi to your Arcade 1UP Countercade. Now I'm going to go over several steps. There are a couple things that I left out, but they're self-explanatory. I'm also going to go over all the parts I used to get this up and running, and I will leave links in the description. In this video, I did leave a couple parts out, like power supplies for the Raspberry Pi, but the links are down below. If you need help installing RetroPie to your SD card, I do have a full tutorial, and I'll also link that in the description. Alright guys, so let's go over the parts I use to mod out my countercade. First up, we have the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. I chose the 3B Plus because there's some really good images available for it. And the Raspberry Pi 4 just doesn't have the software support from the retro side as of making this video. As for cooling on the Pi, I'm not using any fans, I'm just using the Flirt case. One of the most important parts of this build is the LCD video driver or the converter board for the LCD screen. Now this particular model here does work with the built-in 8-inch screen on the countercade and they're available for $19.99 on eBay. I'll leave links for everything in the description. It comes with everything seen here plus standoff so you can mount it inside of the countercade very easily. We do have a menu control board attached and this is actually running through VGA but this kit does come with a VGA to HDMI adapter and this does have a 3.5mm audio jack in case you want to use HDMI audio out. Unfortunately, this board does not have an audio amp built in, so you will have to provide your own amp. And I definitely went overboard on the amp. This is just a small speaker in here, and a USB powered 3 watt amp is going to work just fine. But I went a little overboard with it because I already had an extra amp laying around. The amp that I'm going to use in this build here, or that you've already seen, is way overkill for the countercade. But like I mentioned, I already had an extra one plus the power supply, so I'm going to be using this along with a 3.5mm audio jack. If you don't mind doing a little bit of soldering, you can buy the little USB amps for really cheap on Amazon. But then again, these amps here are about $8 to $10 on eBay. Now with this build here, I'm going to be mounting everything inside of the cabinet with screws except for the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be using a little bit of double-sided sticky tape just to hold it in place. For buttons and sticks, I went really cheap on this. $20 bucks for a kit comes with a stick and all I needed was 5 buttons. It also comes with our USB encoder. These work great, I've never had any issues with them, and I've used about 10 different kits. If you want to splurge and spend a lot more money on buttons and sticks for your arcade 1UP cabinet, you can definitely do that, but I want to keep this as cheap as possible. After all, these are cheaper cabinets in the first place. So as for powering everything inside, there's a couple ways to go about this. You can always pick up one of these three prongs with a switch on it, and what you would do is mount this to the back, and then strip the wires on your power strip and connect it here. But you got to keep in mind, this is 110 volts. If you don't have any electrical wiring experience, I would stay away from this. This is going to be the cleanest method, and there's lots of tutorials online how to get this set up. But if you don't want to deal with something like this, there's a much easier way. A simple power strip with a longer cord. So what you would do with this is mount the power strip inside of the cabinet itself. You could notch the back panel so you could run the wire out and you're going to plug everything in. You'll always have that cord attached. It's definitely not as clean, but I do recommend doing it this way if you don't have any electrical wiring experience. And if you ever want to replace it down the road with the three prong switch, you can do that pretty easily. You may have noticed in the beginning of the video that I have a different control panel. Now you can always modify the control panel that comes with your countercade, drill some holes in it, put some extra buttons in there and it'll be fine but I found a company called Tulsa Arcade that actually makes control panels for this. I got the three button configuration, they also offer a six, and you can get custom art if you'd like to. I just chose one of their stock photos to get this done. You can also opt in for the plexiglass cover and I do recommend it. As for disassembly, it's very easy. I just pulled the back off and we need to remove the metal cover right here. This houses the stock main board and we just wanna get this out of the way.
We're just going to unplug everything here, the power, the LCD connection, and there's also a ground that's connected to the board with one Phillips head screw. You're just going to take this out and remove the board from the cabinet. I would go ahead and put this in a safe place. You could always reuse it if you ever want to go back to stock with your countercade. We're just going to remove the control panel. There's two screws and this one here was actually already loose out of the box. I haven't even booted this thing up with the stock internals in it. Since we already removed the board, so come right out. We'll just unplug the speaker. We're going to be reusing the wire and the speaker that's already in the counter cave. And if you don't want to buy a pre-drilled control panel, you can always use a step bit and add some extra buttons to the one that came with it. Like I said, I use this cheaper set of buttons. These are LED backlit. They fit right in the new control panel that I got from Tulsa Arcades. And if you are using these LED buttons, there's two connections for the LED. We have positive and negative, and then we also have two connections for the button itself. The connection for the button itself is not polarity sensitive, but the LED is. So I've just placed my buttons in the control panel and I've hooked up my LEDs. Keep in mind the LED connections are polarity sensitive, so positive goes to positive, negative goes to negative. But as for the button connection itself, it is not polarity sensitive, so you can put these on any way you'd like. You just need to plug them into your encoder board in the correct locations. Now since we're using RetroPie, we can totally program this, so it really doesn't matter where they go. And if you get lost setting up your USB encoder, there are tons of videos on YouTube on how to do this. I'm just going to mount the encoder board to the back side of the panel, and this also comes with a joystick connection. It only goes in one way on the board and the joystick itself. When it's all said and done, you'll have a rat's nest sort of like this. The connections to the encoder board may be in a different location from mine. Now it's time to mount our LCD controller board inside of the cabinet. I'm going to mount it to the side of the cabinet with the included standoffs, but make sure you put it in a location to where you can reach the HDMI to your Raspberry Pi. You could use a decent screwdriver for this, but I'm going to be using a drill. I now have the LCD controller board mounted to the side along with the menu button board. I'm going to be placing my amp right underneath it. I just clipped the little connector off the speaker wire so I can plug it right in. And like I said, this amp is way overkill for this cabinet, but I already had one laying around. All that's really left to do here is add our power supply and put our controller board back in and plug it into the Raspberry Pi. So like I mentioned, if you don't have a lot of electrical wiring experience, I do recommend using a standard corded power supply. I'm just using a little three outlet here, but make sure all of your power supplies can plug in comfortably. And by the way, the 12 volt power supply that comes with the countercade will power your LCD converter board. You can place this anywhere in the cabinet you'd like on the bottom. That's exactly where I'm going to place mine, but you could also place it on the side if you want to. So I just need to put in my controller board and run my USB to the back so I can plug it into the Raspberry Pi. And once I have the control panel on and ran my wire through, I just need to plug everything in. I just use some zip ties to clean everything up, and I think it looks pretty decent. I mean, it's still crowded in here, but we have a very small cabinet to work with. So let's go ahead and power it up and see if it works. This Verdi Wild image that I mentioned is perfect for this little countercade. And there we have it. We're now done with the mod. We have our Raspberry Pi installed. It's running RetroPie with the track mode because I'm using that image I mentioned. The only thing you really need to do is go into the RetroArch settings, main settings, and the track mode settings and map your controller or your arcade stick and buttons. But overall, it worked out really well. I do wish that this 8-inch screen built into the countercade wasn't so washed out, but that's what we have with the cheap arcade setup. Until we can come up with a cheap enough screen for this, this is what we're going to be working with. But overall, it does function fine, and it's a cool little project. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to check out the description for all the parts I used in this video. And if you need help installing RetroPie to your SD card, I also have a full tutorial. I really do hope this helps some people out in modding their countercade. But like always, thanks for watching.